Welcome to Self Publishers Collective. My name is Michelle Williams and I'm happy to host the Self Publishers Collective every second Thursday at 7 p.m. at Bosler Memorial Library. This session is the April workshop. In May, we will meet on May 12th, then going forward every second Thursday at 7 p.m. at Bosler Memorial Library. Come join us in person or come join us through Zoom. We have a hybrid class and we'd be happy to share the Zoom link with you. Please contact Bosler Memorial Library or you can reach out to us on selfpublisherscollective.com to request the Zoom link. Just to let you know what we do during the meetings, we have an introduction, those who are in person or joining us online. We have an introduction network session where we introduce ourselves and describe the type of work that we're working on, whether it's a book or blogs or any other kind of writing. And then we have announcements and then we get into our lesson and our workshop. Announcements and upcoming meetings in May, we're going to be talking about book elements. What parts of your book do you need to tweak in order to capture the reader's attention? That includes the book cover, the back cover, your introduction, your summary. In June, we're gonna have a guest speaker and that is hometown author, Tom Kelchner, who's written a legacy cookbook. Uh, he self-published and he put this book together. It's an amazing piece of work. He also has a blog and is on Facebook under pafoodlife.com. In July, we're gonna talk about Beyond the Book. Using your book as your calling card for other revenue streams, including podcasts, guest speaking, conferences, seminars, and how to reach out to other groups in your genre, in your like-minded world to add your voice. Now let's get into our workshop for April and that's self-publishing 101 introduction. First things first, a lot of authors ask me, and you may be wondering, who is the publisher when I'm self-publishing? Is it Amazon? Is it Ingram Sparks? You, the author, are the publisher, whether or not you publish through KDP, which is Amazon self-publishing site, or through Ingram Spark, which is tied to Ingram Books. Now, when it comes to hybrid self-publishing sites that advertise where you pay them a fee and they distribute your book on their website and also other platforms like Amazon or Barnes and Noble, Apple, you need to be very careful about your contract. When you sign up and you pay them a fee, you're paying them a fee to publish your book and they may hold the rights to distribute your book as they see fit. If you publish your book in 2012 and they see that revenue is not being made for them or for you as the author, they may archive your book without even letting you know. So. Uh, in order for you to take control of that, sometimes you have to break contracts with them, but you have to read your contract very carefully. So if you get into a paid hybrid self-publishing organization, if you want to partner with them, and they do offer some very good services, uh, you need to make sure that you read your contract and understand that down to the detail of what they are responsible for, what you're responsible for, and what they hold the rights to. You will hold the copyright, right, of the body of your work, but the distribution and the selling of the book is in their control, typically. So please read your contract. Every book needs an ISBN to be part of the book world, to be able to sell it, to have a barcode, to have it logged into a library. You need the ISBN number. So for an ebook, you don't need an ISBN. That's an electronic book where you publish your book digitally. Uh, it's distributed to libraries, to Amazon, to wherever, depending on your platform. And it does not need an ISBN number. However, when you start getting to the printed side, you will need an ISBN. Whether it's paperback or hardcover, you will need one. And for each, if you wanted to do both paperback and a hardcover, you would need a separate ISBN for each of those. Audiobooks, you don't need an ISBN. Uh, that is also digital content, and you will not need one for that. All right, let's talk about ISBNs and how you obtain them. With Amazon or KDP.com, the ISBN that they offer to you is free. The upside is no cost 
the downside is some bookstores and possibly some libraries will not take your book because it is an Amazon ISBN. It's very unique, it's distinctive, and they know what to look for. Now you can take your book, self-published book, and go to your local library and donate it to them if you choose to, but on a broader scale, libraries are probably not going to order your book for their shelves and larger bookstores are not going to order your book uh, because of the connotation that Amazon has taken over just about everything with self-publishing. They also understand that self-publishing means that you don't have to hire a, an editor or do things professionally. And so the reputation of self-publishing uh, of some authors not doing due diligence for their work and getting a good professional editor or a professional book cover designer, uh, it tends to diminish the reputation of self-published books. So if they see Amazon ISBN on your book, they may or may not take it. Uh, but on the upside, Amazon has over 80% of the book selling market uh, within its platform. Uh, so if you wanted to go that route, most readers are going to be looking for your work through Amazon. Or you can use your own ISBN number and that costs money. For Ingram Sparks, you have to use your ISBN. They do not assign that for you. Uh, so if you go that route, and that is a self-publishing side, self-publishing platform that will uh, distribute to Barnes and Noble. So if you wanted to hit Amazon and Barnes and Noble, you would have to use your ISBN number that you purchased uh, for both of those sites. That will be one ISBN number per book. And then Lulu.com is the third largest self-publishing site, but they are a hybrid. They will assign you an ISBN number. It will not look like an Amazon ISBN number. It's an uh, ISBN number that is purchased through them with a paid package. What that means is they become the publisher. You are a self-published author. Uh, but they own rights to the ISBN number. So just keep that in mind and again, read your contract. You can also use your own to obtain rights to your uh, distribution for your book. And then others, usually it's yours only for self-publishing, uh, but the hybrid ones again will charge you a fee and it's in your contract uh, that they own the rights to the distribution of your book. If you wanted to purchase your own ISBN number, that would be through Bowker, My Identifier Services in the United States. You can buy 10 for about $300 or one for about 125. So your best bet, if you're gonna invest that much, save up a little bit more, get 10 of those. Those are yours for your lifetime. And you can use those anytime you want. Uh, whether it's now or whether it's 20 years from now. Those ISBN IDs belong to you. All right, let's talk about copyright. Publishing does not mean copyright. About three years ago in March of 2019, the US Supreme Court ruled that if you wanted to file a lawsuit for copyright infringement, you had to have your copyright certificate in hand before you filed a lawsuit. So it's a simple process, just go to copyright.gov with a PDF of your body of work, and the fee is about $35, but go to copyright.gov and there's instructions there for self-publishers on how to get copyrights for your work. And it takes anywhere from two to three months to get your certificate. So if you are already published, you can still go through copyright.gov and get your copyright certificate. Library of Congress. If you want your body of work to be stored in the Library of Congress, you can do that as well. You'll get a Library of Congress control number, and they have a special site for self-published authors that you can access. Uh, in the description below, you will find the link to go to the Library of Congress for self-publishers, and you can get your Library of Congress uh, control number, and they will house your body of work Here's an example of their website, a pre-pub book link, where you're requesting a Library of Congress control number. Just go through the steps, answer the questions, and you will pay a fee, and they will send you a Library of Congress control number. Now, let's talk about publishing sites. The two sites, you as the self-publisher, have full control over the content and the selling and distribution of your book. If you use these two, Amazon and Ingram Spark, 
that covers Amazon and it covers Barnes and Noble, which is about 95% of the book market. So if you want to just use these two, uh, that will cover most of the distribution within the United States. And Amazon does distribute globally on their through their other partner country websites, Canada, Denmark, uh, most of Europe, Japan, and so on. Now, let's talk about Amazon. Amazon is completely free. There is no money out of pocket. It just takes a little bit of work, a little tech fortitude and understanding to be able to self-publish. Ingram Spark is a little bit different, is a separate site. You will need very similar files, like your book content file in PDF form, and you will have to create your own book cover file. Uh, that means that what you post on Amazon and sell on Amazon, you can also post and sell through Ingram Spark, which would hit Barnes and Noble. Uh, but you will have to make sure that both look the same as far as content and book cover. For Ingram Spark, there is a cost. It's usually $49 for a bundled fee of doing an ebook and a print book. In this case, you will have to use your own ISBN number for Ingram Spark. So if you choose to do one body of work, say a book, on Ingram Spark and you want to do the same on Amazon, you have to buy your own ISBN number and you would use that one number for each site for that body of work. So here's a look at Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. You will sign up as an author, publishers. Uh, hybrid publishers, they do it this way as well. So you're not doing anything different than a paid hybrid publisher is doing uh, that you're paying them money for. It just takes a little bit of practice and know-how and you can do this on your own. You will have to uh, have a bank account in order to get paid and that can be any institutional bank or online banking as long as you have a routing number and account number you can sign up it can be a checking or a savings a wise thing to do is to get as free of charge bank account as you possibly can and have it separate from your personal so you can have that tracking of what it costs you to publish a book if you want to do promotional or marketing ads uh, and the revenue coming into your bank account as your income You'll do the tax information from here. Once you do your tax information, they will have to have your social security number. You'll be able to sign it and submit it and they will take care of all of that for you. And then once you're signed up, this is your bookshelf. And you can see here, uh, create a new title. You can either do a Kindle ebook or a paperback or start with one or the other. I recommend that you start with the paperback. That takes a little more work, but once that is fully complete and ready to be launched, you can actually create the Kindle ebook straight off of your paperback and it's a lot less work. So once you get this paperback done, click on add an ebook and it will convert everything you just did in paperback onto an ebook file. You can also create a series on here. If you're a fiction writer and you want to create a series of books, you can start, create, and manage a series on KDP. Let's look at Ingram Spark. Very similar. They have a global print ebook agreement, very similar to Amazon. Uh, there is an option to send this to Amazon through an ebook, not through print. But through an ebook, you can go to Apple and Amazon. Uh, so I recommend that if you do have the funds to purchase your own ISBN number, that you use both platforms where you're getting print into Barnes and Noble and other organizations, that you're getting print out on Amazon through KDP, and that you have an ebook distribution that's beyond Kindle. You can go to uh, the Nook through Barnes and Noble and Apple eBook, which is very different and requires a little bit more formatting. And they'll take care of that for you. Ingram Spark, you have to sign up. This is your business or legal name as it appears as an author. So in my case, when I use, I use my entire full name uh, with a suffix at the end or credentials at the end, and that will be my business or legal name as a self-published author. Just answer the questions here. You'll go through security, your agreements, compensation, payment methods. You'll have to have a bank account again. And then with Ingram Spark, you're going to have to have your own ISBN number, uh, your cover and interior files, same as you would have to have for Amazon's KDP, a valid email address, and a payment method.
On both sites, you'll get a loads of resources and information. Both Amazon and Ingram Spark have YouTube channels where you can learn all about their method of self-publishing, give you tips as an author on how to format, do a book cover, and get everything right for your publication. All right, let's talk about book size. And this depends on the genre, but you're going to need to know your book size before you create your file. And the reason is that as you're writing, if you're writing in an eight and a half by 11 format, which is standard for a Word document, and you want to do a six by nine book, by the time you finish writing and get everything reformatted, it just takes a lot more work to do that. So if you're doing a six by nine, make sure you go into Word, that you change the page size to six by nine, and then you can start writing in that document. So it's always best to start with the file size that you're going to publish in. For fiction, here are the standard trim sizes for fiction books. As you can see, the different sizes here. When you're looking at nonfiction, again, you see the six by nine pop up here. When you get to children's books, that's a little bit different because of how we hold our books and read books to our kiddos. And uh, that's a little bit wider than most of the other sizes. Uh, so just pick your size and stick with that and design everything around that pre-chosen size. All right, let's get to categories and keywords. Uh, BISAC categories and keywords. Let's talk about what that is. The BISAC categories and keywords are how you're describing your book, the major subject that best describes the content of your book, and then subcategories that might push a reader to uh, the genre that you're writing under, and then keywords to help them specifically find your body of work. There are main topics. This is a standard format. This is goes into mostly nonfiction, but under main topic categories, and you can see the categories there. And then fiction usually is a category by itself with a lot of subcategories to help people find your work if you're a fiction writer. So I gave you two examples here. The fiction and the self-help are the BISAC or top categories, and then you start digging down into the subcategories. You never want to choose general. So you see fiction general here, you see self-help general here. You never want to choose just general. You want to be more specific than that. For fiction, if you are doing an African-American and Black uh, Christian series, that's where you want to uh, focus your readers, that's where they're going to look for your book. If you want to do self-help when it comes to codependency, uh, there's a specific category for that. So make sure you choose specifically to your body of work and the genre in which you're writing. So keywords, if you're publishing through KDP, keywords are going to be very key, no pun intended, to make sure that the writers are searching and finding your work. Best practice is to use one, two, or three keyword or combined keyword phrases and or short phrases to point readers to your body of work and then test your keywords. So in the exercise, we're going to do that. We're going to test some keywords and that gets us to our workshop portion. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a few keywords and we're going to go incognito on Amazon and we're going to test those keywords out in the book section. So here we go. We are incognito. All you have to do if you're on Google Chrome is just click this and click this uh, three dot drop down and do incognito. And then we're going to go to Amazon. We're going to go to books and we're going to have we're going to do some keywords here. Let's say you are writing fiction and you're writing murder mysteries. And let's say you have a niche. One thing in class that we looked at was Memphis. One of our writers is writing a series on Memphis murder mysteries. So when we do this and we look at Memphis, we're going to find murder mysteries written typically in that region. So this gives us what we're looking for. And this is just a test to see if what we, what our keywords are, are actually finding where our book is going to reside. Let's do another thing. Let's see, we're doing self-help. 
and trauma recovery. There we go. And that's what we're finding. If we just do trauma recovery, say that's going to be a key phrase, trauma recovery, we're going to find some of the same books. So just make sure that as you do your keywords or keyword phrases that it is pulling the books within your genre. Let's do one more. We're going to be uh, legacy cooking, old recipes, and that puts us in some cookbooks that are geared towards that. So uh, that will be a good one if that's what you were looking for. And then let's try one more. Let's say we're writing a book on how to sew uh, dolls or homemade dolls, and there you go. So just make sure that you play around with your keywords, that you're in books, and that you're incognito. You'll have to look, if you use micro, uh, Microsoft Edge, you'll have to look at how to do that. But on Chrome, it's the three dots here, and you choose incognito. The exercise for this workshop is to write keywords. So write for five minutes using descriptive words about your book. From that list, create about seven key phrases. Amazon allows you to have seven key phrases. They have seven slots where you can fill those in with key phrases. That is what is going to drive readers to your book. Those key phrases are built in as you self-publish and that is what the algorithms are going to use as people use the search engine, which is Amazon, to look for books. It's going to point you and pull your book up as they use these specific key phrases and keywords. And then always test these out to make sure that these are what you want, that you've gone incognito onto Amazon.com under books and you've tested these out. Keep refining and to make sure that your book is going to land in the genre in which you're working. And then once satisfied, use the keyword phrases to create a book description. And that comes in May. When you come into the workshop in May, we're gonna be talking about book descriptions. That will be our exercise. And we'll be talking about other components as well. Join us online or join us in person. We're happy to have you. It's completely free. And please look at our resources at selfpublisherscollective.com. It's all free resources out there for you to help you in your authorship journey. See you next month. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to Bossler's YouTube channel with notification on so you'll get notified for all upcoming videos.